at the home earlier in the evening uh, when the comments were made. There was an attempt to call 911 by the victim at that point. Uh, he uh, took the phone away from her uh, and prevented her from calling. Uh, luckily, there were some other family members and neighbors that were able to get out and make that call. That was the initial uh, beginning of this criminal episode. Uh, he then returned later to the home uh, where the uh, arson incident took place. Have there been uh, previous calls to this house for uh, domestic disturbances or things of that nature? Uh, I can't speak to that. I, I, I can tell you there have not been any previous calls from the Fort Fire Department made to that address. Uh, other agencies would have to speak to their involvement uh, or responsibility. And the relationship between the two, between the victim and Mr. Uh, Smith? It was, a, it was a dating relationship that was in the dissolving stage uh, and wasn't being accepted well by one were, were they her children, his children? I don't know. Uh, they were neither of their children uh, that were in the, in the house at the time. They both had children, but neither, neither of their sets of children were there at the time. And but whose I, children were they? Uh, it was a, a blood relative's uh, uh, family member. I know you might can't give the exact, but you got any type of age, age range. Are we talking teenagers? Are we talking toddlers? Other than the adult victim, uh, owner of the residence, uh, were, uh, the other members in the household were 19. Uh, since you said that you haven't had a case like this, how many of your about that? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize it as rare, but it is, all, it, it is unusual. Uh, in that uh, uh, the particulars of this case, the fact that uh, the suspect felt the need to set fires at the front and back door, uh, obviously an attempt to block the, the uh, pass of egress uh, from anyone inside. Uh, that's particularly egregious and causes us a lot of concern. Uh, arson in this city is uh, a range of different motives, but this this was really beyond anything that we're going to tolerate in this city. And kind of just talk about from a, um, a first responder standpoint, um, hearing that there was difficulty making the 911 call, and then you know responding with someone inside the home and young people inside the home, and both entry and exits are obstructed by a fire. A fire. Kind of just talk about the possible severity of responders weren't able to get there quick. Oh, it's very severe. Well, the, the victims in this case are very lucky. Uh, there was a, uh, a jogger that was out in the neighborhood that was able to observe the fires uh, just minutes after we believe they were set. She was instrumental in waking the family up. All three members inside the house were asleep at the time. Uh, she was instrumental in waking those family members up and also in helping to begin extinguishing the fires at the front and back door. Uh, without her involvement, Things could have gone much worse uh, without the quick response of the fire engines. Uh, you know, not only did this suspect uh, endanger the lives of the three victims of the residents, uh, he endangered the lives of the firefighters responding that would have been tasked with making a rescue effort of those people had they been had they remained trapped in that house whenever they were home. So, uh, you know, there are a, a number of people that he put into danger. How are the victims doing now? Victims are uh, are doing well. They're uh, obviously shaken, uh, and uh, they were thrust into a spotlight that they didn't expect to be thrust into on Friday afternoon.